Hello everybody and welcome back to On Point HQ and in this video I'm going to show you how I make really simple urban bases um, for bolt action. Um, now these, um, there are a few better pictures on screen now, these are a machine gun team and a mortar team from my um, Stalingrad themed um, German army for uh, bolt action. Now what you'll notice is that I've, I've done quite a bit of work on the base, um, on, on, on each base rather. Um, and they're built up so it looks like there's lots of rubble and timbers and mud and rocks. Now I did this on purpose. Now, anyone familiar with Stalingrad knows there was a fair bit of rubble uh, in, in Stalingrad. So that's what I've tried to sort of emulate on these bases. Um, so it was just very much trial and error, but what I thought I'd do is uh, do a, just a very quick video on how I go about making bases um, of this nature. Um, it's going to be very similar to my uh, my previous video about making scenic bases. Um, so I'm going to sort of do it live, um, mix the the material together, show you what I use, show the techniques, um, and then and then go from there. Um, these I, I really like the look of how these these look. Um, it's it's very quick, but the effect really gives an, a um, a nice look of urban urban rubble of collapsed buildings. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Now, what, what I'm going to be doing the base on is this. Um, now, this is a very simple uh, forward observation team um, that I put together and painted in no time at all. Um, rather than using a three-man uh, round base, I've gone for a very very sort of similar um, square base um, rather than a round one. Um, and what I'm going to do is use the technique to build up a, uh, a rubble-strewn base on here. Now these guys are, are forward observers. I imagine they're they're out in the front lines in shell holes, in abandoned buildings. So what I want to do is build up kind of a not an overly high, but make it look as they're in a shell hole or what used to be a building. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to add a few bits and pieces to give a bit of realism, um, and then after that it'll be painting it, and then, then adding the final effect. So that's what this video is going to be about. So what I'm going to do is change the camera angle so you can see exactly what I'm doing when I make these bases and I'll see you all very soon. Hello and welcome back. So these are all the materials I'm going to be using um, to put this base together. Uh, now I start off with this coarse grit. It's it's got very it's got lots of different grades through it so there's really really fine sand up to quite large um, rocky bits and pieces. This is going to be the main the main bulk of the base and this, will, this is what will give it its, its rubble look. Uh, PVA glue, um, well, this will bind this together. Uh, it makes it pretty malleable so I can, I can sculpt it onto the base uh, but when it dries the glue will melt away and it will leave uneven and irregular shapes um, in the um, the grit and the, the, the coarse material. Uh, kitty litter. <laughs> Um, this is just because there's a few irregular um, stone bits in here, so I'm going to sprinkle some of those in just to give them a bit of uh, a bit of more irregularity, um, some some more uh, broken bits and pieces, some rock, etc. Uh, balsa wood. Uh, these will be used for bits of timber, um, for posts, bits of fence. Um, just be a case of cutting these down and chop and popping them into the. Um, wet material while it's drying <clears throat> and lastly is these these um these are um models uh plaster bricks now they're, all, they're far too big to use on their own what i do is i break them up uh, and use them as bits of broken masonry and i'll again i'll add those to the base to give it a bit of um a bit more detail um so actually on to the um the base itself so let's start off with, I'm going to be using a plastic uh, container, or it's actually from a, a, a Warlord Games um, blister. I'll be using that to mix my uh, rubble and other debris in. Um, there's, there's no exact science to this, it's just what feels right. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, is add some of this to there. It's always better to have too much than too little because you don't want to be going having to go back in and make yourself a fresh batch. Um, I think that will do. Then, time to add the glue. Now, 
Again, no exact science, it's been a bit, a bit hit and miss uh, with the glue. Um, so what we do is apply the glue. And then using a stirrer, just begin to stir it in. And what you'll get is a sort of a gloopy paste. Um, and just mix that together. If you need to, just add a bit more um, PVA. If it, gives it, if it's a little bit dry, you want it a bit, I could say a bit wet, a bit malleable, so you can, you can sculpt it onto the base. Give that a good a good stir that's looking quite good so what what you'll see is it's a, a, a good mix of fine pieces and and bigger rough pieces uh, but that's gonna that's gonna be allow me to really sculpt that onto them what I'll then do is grab a handful of kitty litter and just throw some of the bigger rock bits in there. There you go. And again, just mix that so it all, all combines. I think I'm going to add a little bit more glue. So that is looking quite good. So the kitty letter is all mixed in. Um, and it's all about the right consistency to start applying this. So I'll remove that. So we've got the base. I say what I want to do is, is build up um, Sort of a, a shell hole ruined street type thing now just use just using the stirrer so all i do is apply it like so now what i don't do is i don't go right up to their feet um a, if you do that there's a, there's a danger that you'll you'll, you'll clog the minutes as you'll get them covered in all this gunk so what i tend to do is leave a um a sort of area around their feet and I'll go in and with a paintbrush and a bit of um, finer grit um, just complete that using that instead. So again just using the piece of ball so we'll just work it on. So what I want to do is I can say build this sort of around them as if they're lying in a shell hole so any spaces you do miss you, you can go in and you know add, add it with um, a, a fine like a cocktail stick or something um, I just tend to use the fine grit in between their teeth, uh, in between their um, their feet. <clears throat> so again, I think I've got a bit too close on that one. Um, just a case of building up the sides now. Again, when with this, with the way that's put, it's it's mixed together. It is quite malleable, um, and you can really you can, you can sculpt it into. Um, all kinds of different shapes. So what you can see is there I've left a gap um, just in the middle of it where they are just so I can add the um, the grit around their feet. It's a case now of doing the right hand side. Build that up. Like so. Oh, bit close there. Oh, that'll 
work. Smooth off the edges. And then once once you've got the main <coughs> excuse me the main um, part down, you can go back it. You can go back and use bits that you've left over to build irregular um, you know, sizes, so different different heights, etc. But the way that's looking now, I'm quite happy with that. So you can probably see. Um, built up quite well um, what I'll do once I've added all the bits and pieces and I'm waiting for it to dry I'll go and take some photographs so you can see uh, what it looks like uh, before I paint it um, I'm pretty much happy with that let's add a little bit more at the back a bit on that corner as well I really want to make it look like they're, uh, they're in a shell hole uh, or in the ruins of a, a building but now I think that for the rubble I think we'll call that finished okay so onto the details <coughs> excuse me so then I'll go the go to these bricks now again the when I bought these I uh, there was a slight miscalculation <laughs> on how big they actually were uh, they're huge um, but broken up they make great masonry and um, so what I'm gonna do is get two of these get a heavy duty um, craft knife and just with these because I made a plaster you don't have to really um, attack them too much now I think one might actually be enough so what I want to do is get the bits and pieces and just where the um, material is wet just press it in and that will dry and keep the masonry in place again with this you don't want to go over town um <clears throat> you don't want to go overboard rather uh, with these just uh, um, i think i'm going to add one more piece and i think i'll put that there so you can see i've just added the the bricks um they will melt up dry into the into the uh, the material i've put on there they will bind them together and once they're painted they will just like bits of broken masonry and um, the last thing i like to do is add my old favorite a uh, bit of balsa wood as timbers as posts uh, again get your craft knife um, in fact i did a bit irregular it's a bit big actually And all I'm going to do is sort of press that in, like so, that will dry. So we've got a, you can see at the back there, a bit of timber. And then for the last one, I'm just going to press that into the material there. So what it's done, it's given us a, a really quick, urban base um, so what will happen now is I leave this dry now I tend to leave this dry for quite a long time uh, usually overnight um, but I'll stick it by the window and hopefully the uh, the daylight will um, will dry that pretty quickly um, once that's done I'll come back and do another part of the video and I'll show you exactly what I do to paint this uh, or what I'll also do as well uh, off camera because it's really pretty boring you don't want to see it is <laughs> just going with a paintbrush and some PVA glue in between their feet and then drop some some fine um fine grit in there as well um and that will that will disguise the, the plastic or the exposed plastic part of the base but for the most part that is the actual construction work done not a lot of time um at all <clears throat> went into that so i guess it just needs to make that make that dry the pva when it when it dries will sort of melt away and it will leave um really uneven um and, and broken looking ground so that's going to dry and I'll be back in the next part of the video to show you how it's painted. So see you soon. Okay, so that is the um, the base fully dry. There'll be some photographs on screen now of what it all looked like 
um, closer up uh, when it was uh, when it was all just drying. Um, so as you can see, all the uh, the mason, broken masonry and the bits of balsa wood are, are fully secure um, into the uh, into the, the the rubble. If for whatever reason, <coughs> excuse me, the the bits you add don't don't set properly, um, you can very simply just remove them. Uh, dab a super glue gel, press them back in, and the job jobs are good. And I did that with one one piece of masonry; it just wasn't setting into the uh, into the mix. Um, so I removed it and I reattached it with a piece of super glue, and it's it's really really secure now. Um, so with that fully dry, what we need to do now is is paint it. Now the the colour I I mean it all, it all depends on what um what look you're going for with your urban basin. The combination I use is a mixture of three paints, which is um, Vallejo Burnt Umber, Dark Rubber, and Olive Grey. Um, I combine these into a sort of dirty brown, green um, color. This is then applied to all of the base. Um, what I'll then do is go in and pick out the individual bits and pieces on there. So the, um, the bricks will be given a, a, a browner. Um, look and the, the timber will be painted brown as well. Uh, once that's dry, I then add a, a dollop of Vallejo Ivory, the original colour, just very lightly dry brush um, over the, the all of the base. Um, with the masonry and the the bits of wood, I tend to do a, um, a heavier dry brush on there just to make them pop a little bit more. Um, but that 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 level of painting for me does it. You don't have to really do anything more to it. Uh, the look I'm aiming for, like I say, is dark, uh, a rubble-strewn um, street or building. Um, so I don't want anything too bright on there. But with the, the bits and pieces, I just like to give a, a bit more, bit more definition to them and make them stand out. So what I'm going to do is go away now and paint this. Um, what I'll also do is I'm going to be adding some snow, um, snow to mine. Um, this is very, very easily done using a mix of. Um, bicarbonate of soda or, or baking soda, uh, PVA glue, um, mix it into a, a bit of a paste, apply it to the top um, and it's all done. Uh, I know people have said that in the, sometimes you have to add some, some white paint to stop it from yellowing. I've, I've been using the same um, bicarb for 16 years now, <laughs> literally 16 years. And I've never had any problems with any snow effects that I've been doing. So maybe I'm just lucky, uh, but that, that's the effect I use. So what I'm gonna do now is go away, paint that, do all the dry brushing, add a bit of snow, and come back and show you the finished piece. So, see you soon. And welcome back, and that is the whole thing finished. Uh, very little time at all. Um, as always, there'll be some photographs on the screen now, um, just to show you the finished thing in a lot more detail. Um, but yeah, pretty happy with how it came out. Um, as you can see, I've added the snow like I do to all my um, my Stalingrad Germans. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, this is just PVA glue and uh, bicarbonate of soda. I don't go over top with the snow. I just put it on so like it's 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 fr it's, it's melting, um, and you can still see an equal amount of of, um, of snow and um, ground underneath. Uh, what you also notice as well is I've added a. Uh, PPSH 41 to the base, just as a bit of um, a bit of detail for the guy. The, the, the binoculars has not got any kind of weapon, which would be very, very bad for your general health and safety um, in Stalingrad. Um, but yeah, overall, not bad. Quite happy with how that turned out. Um, this will be added to the ranks of my uh, bolt action Stalingrad Germans. Um, so all I did, like I guess, I, I painted it light dry brush, and then. I added a kind of a, a, a lighter, a heavier dry brush rather, just using Vallejo Ivory. And this is to pick out the, the upper extreme parts of the, uh, of the, um, the masonry, the timber and, and the rocks. And then I used the same ivory um, just to do, I always do this on my, my, uh, my great coat wearing Germans. Just dry brush a bit of the ivory onto the bottom of the coats and the boots just to represent dried snow and dirt and grime that they've picked up when they've been running through the um, the ruined streets of Stalingrad. But there we have it. That is how I make very simple, very quick urban bases for bolt action. And I imagine this, this technique could be used 
in, in other game systems. Um, as people know, Bolt Action is my game of choice, and this is where I use these uh, this, this, this type of basing. But, yep, yeah, that's one finished base. Well, I hope you found that um, useful uh, in making your own bases. If you, if you do try uh, this technique, uh, please let me know how you found it, whether you can you make your own, improve on it, um, change the materials out, use it on different different models, different figures, different games. I'd love to love to know what you think of this, uh, this process. But as always, thanks for watching. Uh, take care, may your dice roll well, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye bye for now.